welcome to this tutorial. I'm Mrs. Duffy and today I'm going to show you how to create a animation in Photoshop. So here's an example of what we're going to create today. To begin with we need to create a new document. So create new and we're going to prepare the, space, the canvas let's say a height of 500 and the width of 500. And we'll, let's put this in RGB so we can use some color and create. So I've got my canvas and it's quite small. So we want to zoom in a little bit. Hold down your control key on your keyboard and press the plus and that will zoom it in a little bit for you. What we'll need to start with now is the text, the, the word shake. Now instead of using the word shake, you could use your name. I'm just going to use the word shake and I'm just going to click on my screen and then type shake. As you can see, my text is going off of my canvas. Yours may be within, it might be really, really small, you may not be able to see it even. Or it might be huge and a lot bigger than mine, depending on who last used your, your version of Photoshop on your computer or what last project you did. So what you can do is double click on the word and then come up here to the text size and change that. So ideally what I've worked out is we want 125. Now you won't see 125 on there. So you'll select the largest one, just select the value 72 there and then just change it to 125 and press enter and that will make it larger. It's still running off of my canvas. That's okay. Let's come up here and tick okay and then we'll need to use the move tool. Now you can use V on your keyboard and that will bring up that tool and allow you to move your work around. So we've got it in full view. I can see the whole word now, but it's a bit small to be able to work in. So what I want you to do next is control, hold the control key and the plus key and make it larger. You can move it around a little bit more. We just want it centered there. Now, the next thing is I want to make sure that your workspace is the same as mine, so that there's no confusion there. So let's go up to the Windows menu, come down to Workspace, and make sure you've selected Motion. If you still don't see down the bottom here the Timeline, come up here to Window, and then go down until you see Timeline there. We will be using extensively for this animation, Timeline. And over on the right here, we need to see the layers. I'll just bring that, you can drag that up as well. So at the moment, in our layers panel, we've got selected shake. That's the layer with the text on it. Now to create our animation, we need multiple layers, one for each variation of the shape that we want to change. So at this point, we need to create five layers. So come down to the bottom right hand corner and just click on that little plus. Once, twice, three, four, five times and each one of them will be layered, named automatically. Come back down and select layer one. Now what we're going to do on layer one is we're going to draw over top of these characters. Now layer one is like an invisible film over top of the layer that has the text shake on it. And what we're going to do is I'm going to get you to do is to select the paintbrush tool, this one here. Now you can use, just hit B on your keyboard and that will bring up your paintbrush. Now if you're not seeing a circle like this, hit enter on your keyboard and that will often fix that problem. So if you've just got a little cross here like that, hit enter on your keyboard and then you will be able to see that uh, brush. The other problem I'll check with you at this point is yours may be very, very small. Your brush might be really, really tiny, so you didn't see any difference. So what I'll get you to do is to use on your keyboard two keys, the keys next to P on your keyboard. There are two keys there with curly brackets on them. The one with the curly bracket pointing to the left will make your brush go smaller and the one to the right of it will make it go bigger. Another way of adjusting your keep brush is to select on this little icon here, 
and use the slider there to change the size of it. You can also change the hardness. So if you're finding that if you click there it's like this, it's very pale, what you've got happening is that the hardness is very low. So we want it on full hardness and I'll just put that back and I don't want that so I'll just go control Z on my keyboard and that will undo what I have done. Now I'll just show you at this point another useful tool if you get stuck and you want to undo something. Over here in the top right you'll see a history icon. Now if you're not seeing that icon that's okay. Come to window menu and then come down to history. That will bring up each of the actions that you have done. So I can go back to the original canvas and it undoes everything that I've done. I can then come back and redo everything I've done. So I'm going back to where I create that last layer and it, you can see that it un has undone me painting before. So that's a handy to know and then I can dock it again by just clicking on those little arrows there. So with that out of the way, the next thing that we need to do, so we're on layer one and our brush actually needs to be smaller than the width of the stroke on those letters. So I'm going to use my keyboard, the, letter, the key next to the P in my case to make it smaller. You may need to make it larger. One more thing, we can change the color of our brush stroke. So I've got blue selected at the moment we come down to the bottom left hand corner and we click on that. You can choose any color that you like. Okay, so you can choose any color that you like and then go OK. So I'm working with purple now. So I'm on layer one and I'm just going to use my mouse to trace around these letters. I'm just going to trace around the S, H, don't worry too much if you go outside of the actual characters. It's not a big deal. This is just a little practice animation and once you get the hang of it you'll be doing some amazing things, amazing animations. So what I've done is I've just traced over with my mouse. Now what I want to do is to hide layer one. I'll still see the text of the word but I just want to hide what I just painted there. Now I need to select layer two and this will allow me to paint on that layer. So I'm going to trace around these letters again. Again, you don't have to be perfect with this. The idea is we don't want them to be identical each layer. We want them to little, look a little bit different because we're making a cell path animation. And we don't want to see that layer anymore, so we select the next layer. See when I'm removing these little eyes there, that reveals and hides those layers. So I'm on layer three now, and again I'll trace around. Remember if you, you're not happy with something, you can undo it. You can control Z on your keyboard, or you can use the history icon or tool there. So I'll finish with layer three and I'll go to layer four. You do need to be on the layer to be able to paint on that layer. So we're doing layer four now and we're only doing five layers. Just keep it nice and simple. And what really cool, as I said, you don't have to use the word shake. You can use the word your first name if you wish. I'm going to hide that now and then select the next layer, layer 5. So this is my last layer. Again, don't have to be too precise on this. Having a bit of fun with it. And we're just experimenting. Right, so there's my five layers. Now, as I said, we're going to be using the timeline down the bottom here. If you don't see that, come up to Window and come down to Timeline. That will display it. Now yours may be showing video timeline. So be do check, make sure that you select the down arrow there and you are clicking on Create Frame Animation. 
So we click on that and it'll create one frame. Now we want five frames, so we're going to click on the plus icon here, this little add frame, and we'll do that four times. One, two, three, four times, and that will give us five frames. Now come back to frame one, and we no longer need to see the actual word shake, and we do want to see layer one, but we don't need to see any of the other layers. So we'll make sure all of those are now hidden. Then we go to layer two, and we only want to see layer two, so we'll select layer two, we'll put the eye on it, and we'll remove the eye from layer one. We go to frame three, and we'll select right, layer three to view and hide layer one. Oops, so layer three, not two. And then we go to frame four, we want to view layer four, and we don't want to see layer one. We go to frame five, we don't want to see layer one, so we, we do want to see layer five. Right, so that's a bit confusing. It'll take a little bit of getting used to, but we're only working with five frames, so it's fairly simple. Let's click on this play icon now, and you can see what happens. So that's what we're looking for, is we're looking to shape those letters. I'll just stop that. So when we create an animation like this, we're making it usually for the internet for a digital publication, an interactive um, or a visual publication. So it's a form of digital media, specifically for the internet. So what we're going to do is we need to export it in a format that can be put on the internet. And so what we're going to do is create this as an animated GIF, G-I-F. So we go to File on the menu, and then we come down to Export and then we save for web. Or you could use the keyboard shortcuts, Alt Shift Control S. So let's click on that. And it gives us some options, but basically we do want a GIF and we will save all the settings as they are. And we'll just go save. Now your teacher will tell you where to save it to. So I'll just call it shape two for now. Save that. And then if you go and you should go and click on it, it should open up and you should have the word shake and it should be shaking or your word, your name. All right, close that. Now, just to give you some inspiration or some ideas of where you might be able to go with this, I've got two examples here. So here is one. Now I'm no good at drawing stick figures. I can't draw to save myself. I grabbed some images off the internet and I animated them. So I have a person walking, that's one idea. Another idea is a bouncing ball. And if I actually open up the Photoshop file for that, I've got two actually, two bouncing balls. Here's another one, let's click on plus. And again, as you can see over on the right hand side, all I've done is I've got all these different layers that I've added and then each layer is a little bit different. But today I wanted to show you how to do it in Photoshop to start and introduce you and get you familiar with Photoshop, a very powerful program. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.